Welcome to the Back to Basics Online Church, where we meet every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time, and many are live with us today as we seek the Lord Jesus Christ and we worship him. We're here to worship God. We praise God. We praise God for those who meet with us on the online church. We praise God for those who meet in the, the brick and mortar church. We're all in the body of Christ and together we worship the Lord God Almighty. I want to welcome you and your family. And for those of you who are listening to the recording in many nations in the world, we give a shout out to you and thank you for listening. And we thank God for the mighty things the Holy Spirit is doing in the world. We praise God. You know, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. Hey, Christianity is not an American thing. Ladies and gentlemen, Americans have a lot to learn about Christianity. We can learn a lot by what's happening in Kenya, what's happening in China, what's happening in Russia, what's happening in Afghanistan, what's happening in behind the scenes in the, some of the Muslim nations where people are surrendering their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. We can learn a lot uh, by seeing what God is doing throughout the whole world. And most of all, we learn it through this Bible. We learn it by studying the Word of God. The Word of God says every Word of God is pure, and He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. I thank God that you've chosen to diligently seek the Lord today and come on and be with us today, and thank God. Thank God. Well, we, we'd like to uh, get started with uh, asking our friend and our, our prayer warrior up in Marysville, Pennsylvania, and his name is Ryan Trogler. We'd like to ask Ryan to come on and greet us and then lead us in prayer. Uh, good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Church. Good morning. Uh, uh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another day. Lord, we also want to thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for all of our sins and ascending into heaven and, and intercede for all of mankind and defeating death and defeating the tomb. And Lord, we just want to thank you for providing and meeting and exceeding all of our needs and thank you for our family and our friends and thank you and Lord bless this online ministry and Lord come down and, and give Pastor Carter the wisdom, the courage, the knowledge to teach us your truth today, which is your word. Lord, we we just we, we just want to give you all the praise and we want to bless this nation and bless nations all around this world and bless each and all of our military personnel. And Lord, we just we just, we just want to thank you for everything that you do and continue to uh, lead us in in the ways of you. So Lord, we just want to say we just we thank you, we praise you, we love you, we worship you in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Amen, amen, Ryan. I agree with that. Amen, Ryan. Praise God. Thank you, Ryan, for leading us in prayer. And we thank God for for his family, for his lovely wife, Tara, and their daughter, Jenna, and their soldiers for the Lord up in Pennsylvania. And we've got people from all over the nation online with us live. And then people from many nations uh, listen to the recordings. I want to welcome Ruth Andrus with us today. And um, I sent Ruth a message on yesterday. Ruth is having a, a surgery this week. So we're, we're believing God, Ruth, that it's already taken care of. We believe God is already taken care of, that God has already gone before you. God, we lift up Ruth Andrus, our sister, and ask that you go before her and, and, and bless in her situation and touch the surgeon. And we pray for healing. We thank you for the healing and the deliverance and that you give her excellent health and restoration. And we praise you in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we claim what your word says in First John 5, 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have in, uh, in him, Ruth, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, 
we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. So we've just prayed for Ruth, and we, we claim uh, 1 John 5, 14 and 15 and the promises of that word, and we thank God. We rejoice with Ruth, and, and we will pray for anyone else later on in the service uh, because we believe in the power of prayer. We serve the prayer answering God. We thank God for touching people all over the world. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Hey, hey, praise God. Praise God. Melanie, we know the power of prayer, don't we, Melanie? We certainly do, Pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. That's Melanie Bias down here in Gray, Georgia, a prayer warrior, a lover of the Lord. Hey, saints, we just thank God. We just, God bless this ministry. And because of your giving, ladies and gentlemen, God bless this ministry. Uh, let me go back two years ago. Two years ago, God blessed us to send $3,500 to Kenya so that they could purchase two acres of land. And they purchased two acres of land for the Back to Basics Ministries Church in Kasumo, Kenya. And then last year, our pastor, uh, Bishop Elijah Wena, uh, said, said they're ready to build if we can help them. And so uh, we designed a building, and they hired the construction people, and we sent them uh, close to $10,000 last year, Back to Basics Ministries did, and based on our tithes and offerings and your giving, and they built the church. You can see this beautiful construction on our website, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com, and, and if you email me, I'll send you the photos. And then... Um, they have begun worshiping. They've been worshiping in that building for almost a year, well, about nine months. Several families have uh, come into the church and received Jesus, and they have uh, a ministry going. And they said, it's cold in there, though, Pastor. It's cold in there. It gets cold in Kenya. Yes, in Africa, where it's near the equator, it gets very cold. And so they said, we need to plaster the walls inside and out and uh, fix up the pastor's living quarters inside the church. So this week, this week, we uh, went into the bank account and sent them another $3,500. That's to cover the plastering of the walls and for uh, the uh, completion of the pastor's quarters so he can live there and minister from that uh, place and uh, see, then he doesn't have to travel all the miles to get to the church. And it's a mighty ministry. This ministry is going to be used to take food out into western Kenya, food and, 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 and nourishment and medications. And it's also the headquarters for a mighty ministry where men and women will come and be trained in the word of God. And already they're developing this ministry. And I want to, help, I want to thank you for helping us to do this. We did this in the name of the Lord. The Holy Ghost did the work. He just used us to help spearhead it. And so we thank God. We thank God. This ministry is now able to stand and, 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 and continue the great work. But I want to thank you for your gifts and your offerings and your donations. Back to Basics Ministries is not a real uh, 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 lucrative ministry we're not here to make money because what we get we give out if i were to show you the bottom line of our bank account today after we sent the money to kenya you say whoa how are you operating we're operating by faith and we thank god for what he does and this ministry is touching people worldwide on a low budget uh ministry what we get we give to help others and we thank god well that's the way we roll that's the way we roll and so we thank god for you we praise god for you you're the you're a part of a worldwide ministry and now we want to give a shout out to our friends down in australia who are getting these messages and uh uh to Jackie Fisher's brother in Australia, Brother John. And we thank God that the Australians are listening to Back to Basics Ministries. And, uh, hey, your sister Jackie's doing very well. She's a, power, a praise warrior. And um, Jackie usually reads our scriptures every Sunday. Uh, but now uh, Jackie's back in the, uh, the, her local church. And what we're doing this year um, 
for our friends in Australia and our friends in Kenya, our friends in, in, in uh, China, our friends in other parts of the world. We are encouraging people here this year to go back into your local church. And so we're going from now until the end of June. Hey, Ryan, from now until the end of June. Melanie, from now until the end of June, the Back of the Basics Ministries is going to be encouraging each of you to find a local church where you can go and, and, and sit under a local pastor and, and find out how you can help that ministry to grow, how you can be a blessing to the people. Yes, uh, by the end of June of this year, well, I want to make a major announcement. By the end of June of this year, uh, Back to Basics Online Church is taking a sabbatical. Yes, yes, every, every pastor needs to take a sabbatical. We're going to take a sabbatical at the end of June, and we're going to take July and August off, and I'll be uh, working in, in our local church, Shy Temple, uh, here in um, Atlanta, Georgia, where Jackie and I are members, and I'll be working there with the people there, with the pastor there. And then in September, uh, we'll come off sabbatical and restart the online church, but we're going to go, Melanie, we'll be going at the evening hour at 7 o'clock p.m. on Sunday nights, and we're going to put a special emphasis in the Back to Basics Ministries in helping other ministers and pr providing, helping to facilitate healing for ministers, for pastors, preachers, prophets, teachers, evangelists, missionaries, and uh, widows and orphans. We're going to sp spend a lot of time ministering to God's leaders. And, 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 and leaders are burning out. Leaders are sick. Many pastors, I know many pastors who are sick. I know uh, I've got some, a couple of pastor friends. They have been incarcerated. I have a, some pastor friends who are in nursing homes, ladies and gentlemen. And that means that there are widows and there are, 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 are people left at their homes. They don't know what to do because the pastor's not there, no longer able to function. And so what we're seeing, what we're seeing not only in this nation, but in nations, pastors are being overwhelmed. Pastors being afflicted, pastors being persecuted and oppressed, and many suffering from sickness, and many have been burned out. And so what we're going to do, we're, we're starting, we'll be starting up in September with a ministry to pastors, teachers, preachers, prophets, evangelists. That means once you go to your local church in the morning, then when you come to us in the evening hour, we'll be able to minister to you, hallelujah, and build you up in the faith, not only here in America, but in other nations. We'll be able to uh, trust the Lord God to build you up in the faith. So we're, we're encouraging people, find a local church where you can serve and uh, where you can be a blessing, and then serve in that church in the morning. Then come on and join us in the evening where our focus is to be praise and worship God and to build up church leaders, build up the Sunday school teachers. Uh, uh, Christy Carpenter is a Sunday school teacher in Kuna, Idaho. Christy cannot come on live with us on Sunday morning, but Christy will be able to come on Sunday evening uh, and many others who will be in that area. So, Melanie, tell your friends. Ryan, tell your friends. Uh, Ruth Andrus, tell your friends. And, and uh, by that time, Ruth will be totally healed and, and with more power, more strength, more vigor. And so we just praise God. So the end of June of this year, we're taking a sabbatical. Back to Basics Online Church will take a sabbatical. Then we'll return in on the first Sunday in September in the evening hour, 7 o'clock p.m. So I'll be sending out notices, and you can get in touch with me. And um, then we all, oh, I'm not going to ask you to go and find a local church, and I'm not willing to do the same. I already talked to my pastor uh, yesterday and told him, I'll be there, I'll be ready uh, to roll First Sunday in July, whatever you want me to do, and that's my position. Hey, whatever you want me to do, whatever you need me to do, that's what I'm going to do. And uh, so that's, God is going to bless because of our obedience 
to him. So we praise God. Hey, we give a shout out to Jackie Carter, who is in Augusta, Georgia today, and uh, with her parents. And Jackie's also going to be ministering the word at the Williams Memorial CME Church in Augusta, Georgia, at 3 o'clock this afternoon. So if you're in the Augusta, Georgia area, make sure you stop in and support Jackie in, in, in the ministry as she presents the word. Well, praise God. Ryan has led us in prayer, and uh, I don't see Jackie on. Uh, well, well, Jackie's in the online, ch- in, in the local church, as I said. And so what we're going to do is ask you to uh, open your Bible or download 1 John chapter 4. Not the Gospel of John, but 1 John, the first letter of John. Those, John has three letters in the, near the end of the Bible. 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. 1 John chapter 4, and um, we'll be ministering from there. Okay, so download 1 John chapter 4, or open your Bible to 1 John chapter 4. And if you don't have a Bible, then uh, please listen. Um, we pray that everybody will have a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, perhaps we can help you to get one. Okay. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for Ryan's prayer. Thank you for hearing the prayer for Ryan. Thank you for hearing the prayer for Ruth. Thank you, Father, for the prayers that have been offered uh, for all, all these believers who are fellowshipping and their families. And if they're is anyone listening who is not a believer, we pray for their salvation today. We pray that you will meet every need, Lord. We pray that the word of God will go forth. I humble myself before you, Father. Use me as your instrument to present your word to the people. We know that uh, preaching is part of worshiping and listening is part of worshiping. And so we worship you by turning our attention to your word as you speak to us. Holy Spirit, and we receive by faith in the mighty name of Jesus. God, forgive us of all of our sins, cleanse us of all iniquity, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to use as a subject today, well, I'll announce that in a moment. Let me ask you this. Are you tired of the hatred and the evil that you're seeing? Take a good look around yourself. And, and, and I want to address Americans first. Are you tired of the hatred, the evil, the vindictiveness, the nastiness, the verbal abuse, the mental abuse, the finger pointing, the political abuse, the political manipulation of people? Are you tired of the, the tweets and the evil things that are being tweeted, uh, even by our president, uh, who's supposed to be a Christian. And, and are you tired of the evil and the put down of, of people? Are you tired of the racism, the, uh, you know, people wearing blackface and, and uh, uh, racists marching in Washington, D.C., and in New York, and, and openly, uh, you know, they get... Uh, permits from the local government to march and parade, uh, the Klan uh, on the rise and the hatred and, and just the put down of people of color and put down of people who are, 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 are sexually uh, different. Uh, uh, are, are you tired of it? Uh, are you tired of the lies and the deception uh, where, uh, I don't know how you feel about it, but when I turn on the news, I don't know whether I'm getting real news or fake news. And so I've got to learn how to discern, ladies and gentlemen, what's truth and what is not truth. Are you tired of looking on Facebook and seeing lies and you see somebody's photos been manipulated or something said about someone or or someone said something and it turns out to be fake news. Uh, some could be true, some can be, could be false. But are you tired of the way that people are putting down other people? Uh, Satan is surely trying to divide this nation. Yes, even the church. He's trying to divide the church. You know, for a while there, Satan uh, tried to make people think that the online church is, 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 is a tangent 
from the regular church and that uh, the regular church could not trust the online church. But, you know, uh, I'm a pioneer in the online church, and I've been doing this for four or five years. And as a pioneer in the online church, I am seeing more and more pastors doing online church services than I've ever seen before. And, and I, I've, I've known for many years, for a few decades, that God has had me on the cutting edge of ministry as a pioneer, as a forerunner, one who's going out there experimenting with things. And then I've seen the church follow a lot of these things. And uh, God has used me in a mighty way. Uh, throughout the years to do that, but now I see a lot of pastors. They have their their own oh, own programs. They got their webcams. They've got their headsets, and they're ministering to people online. And a lot of them used to laugh at us years ago, but now they're doing it because they're seeing that everybody's not coming to church as they used to. Many people don't even attend church anymore. And so Satan has divided people, separated them from church. And if Satan can keep you home and keep you watching cartoons or keep you watching sports events or keep you watching uh, uh, old movies, then, then he can destroy you and destroy your family. And so a lot of churches are seeing a decrease in numbers of attendance and, 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 and many of these used to laugh at the online church, but now they're saying, hey, hey, the online church is here to help us. We're brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, and we're using whatever voice God makes available for us to minister the word of God to keep people in touch with Jesus. So I thank God for the boldness and the courage of the Back to Basics online church and for your boldness and courage to support this ministry and to be out here on the battlefront with us. And we thank God that people are, are coming into the knowledge of Christ through the online church and people are going from the online church going back into the, the uh, brick and mortar church and saying, okay, uh, I've learned a lot now. Where can I fit in? How can I help this ministry to grow? How can I help people to grow? And so I see God uh, bringing us together and, and using many of us like Ryan Trugler, Ruth Andrus, uh, Melody Bias, uh, Jackie Carter, and Jackie Fisher, uh, uh, Christy Carpenter, and... Um, Christina McDaniel, and so many others, Cheryl Hawkins, Andrew Hawkins, and uh, taking us from the online church and putting us back into local situations where we can help build up the body of Christ. And I love it. I love it. And so uh, in June of this year, we're taking a sabbatical. We're going back into the uh, local church for several months, and we're going to help build them up. And then and on Sunday evenings, we'll come back. Uh, and, and help help strengthen all those who have gone back into the online church, uh, gone back into the uh, local church. We're going to help build up pastors. We're going to help build up those who are bruised. We're going to help build up those who are sick. How? Well, what do you mean, pastor? We're going to help build them up through the word of God, through love, through prayer, through praise, and through worship. We're going to trust the Holy Spirit to build you up. Praise God. Are you tired of the corrupt politics in this nation and in your nation? Okay, don't just point the finger at America. I, I, got, I have friends all over the world, many living in corrupt situations. Uh, uh, some are in countries where they can't even watch programs like this. They have to secretly uh, get these tapes and, and recordings. Are you tired of lying, politically corrupt preachers and church leaders it just blows my mind ladies and gentlemen the number of big name preachers in this nation who are afraid to preach righteousness and justice and the word of god they are afraid to preach the word of god in other words they they carefully select what passages of scripture they are going to deal with and, and, and because they're in the pockets of the politicians. They are afraid of people. Many of them are afraid to lose their positions. Many are, are afraid to lose their jobs and their followings. But I am not 
afraid. You know, I came into this world with nothing. I'm going to leave with nothing. But when I leave here, I will have Jesus on the inside. Praise God. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. So I don't have uh, to worry about uh, leaving an empire or a kingdom. Uh, I just have Jesus. And he's my Lord, my Savior, my God, and my King. And, and, and he's enough for me. He's sufficient for me. It's time uh, if you're tired of all these things, and many of us are grieved by what we're seeing and what we're experiencing, and even in the body of Christ. I mean, I see Christians going on Facebook and the social media and putting others down and, and saying negative things, and then I get all these text messages, make this go viral, and it's uh, something mean and something uh, uh, the, that's punitive or something that's oppressive. Uh, or it's, it's bullying someone else. I refuse to make any of that go viral, so don't send me any of that mess. Well, if you're tired, then join me as I propose today that we start a love revolution. Let's start a love revolution. That's the name of my a title of my sermon today. Let's start a love revolution. No, 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 we're not going back to the late 1960s and the early 70s where they talked about the flower children and free love. No, that was madness. That was madness, and a lot of people are still suffering today if they live through all that. No, no, uh, we're not talking about that kind of love revolution. What we need in this world, we need in America, we need in your house and in my house, we need a love revolution revolution. Let's look at the Word of God. Let's look at what the Word of God says. I'm going to share many scriptures with you this morning about why we need to learn how to love one another, why we need to return to loving one another. John 13, verses 34 and 35 says, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that ye also love one another. This is Jesus speaking through John. John was Jesus' cousin. John wrote the Gospel of John. He wrote the three letters, first, second, third John. And he wrote the book of uh, Revelation. And Jesus spoke through John and said, A new commandment I give unto you. Well, who is you? You and I. A new commandment give I unto you, that you love one one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Now, you, will, you, you can't show me anywhere in the scripture where Jesus got on Twitter and put people down and just called people scum and called people nasty things and, 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 and just beat them up like, like our president does people. Nowhere in the world... Uh, can you show me that Jesus showed himself that way? And so Jesus said, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. John, uh, First John, uh, that's, I'm sorry, that was John 13, 34 and 35, not First John 34, 13. John 13, 35, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have loved one to another. A lot of people are saying, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. But if you don't show love, then, then what are people to speculate? Jesus said, by this you shall know. All men shall know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. John fifteen twelve says, this is my commandment that you love one another. As I have loved you. Well, I don't like the Mexicans. I don't like the blacks. I don't like uh, the Italians. I don't like the Eastern Europeans. I don't like the Chinese. I don't like the uh, Africans. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says in John fifteen twelve, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. We need more preachers to preach this word. And not to ple preach this political stuff that they're preaching. Uh, I've just finished reading a great book by Stephen Matson. You might want to get this. Stephen Matson, 
It's called The Reckoning. Stephen Matson is, uh, I think he lives in Minnesota. He is bold. He's courageous. And he takes off against American Christianity and this political thing and this Republican Democratic form of Christianity and how many so-called Christians in this nation are following a form of Christianity, Christianity that is political, that has a political agenda, and it just wipes out the love of Jesus Christ and the teaching of teachings of Jesus Christ. And in his book, The Reckoning, Stephen Matson uh, uh, really puts down American Christianity as an aberration of Christianity. It bastardizes Christianity. It does not. American Christianity does not reflect what Christ taught and how Christ lived. And Jesus said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Get a copy of Stephen Matson's book, The Reckoning. I read it. I love it. I've talked with Stephen Matson. He and I have communicated with one another. And I said, keep up the good work. And he's exposing the hypocrisies of American Christianity that, you know, it's patriotic, it's flag-waving, and, and it makes people think that whatever Americans do is right and whatever anybody else does is wrong. And that is not Christianity, ladies and gentlemen. Christianity is built on the love of of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. Romans 12.10 says, Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another. Now when you read this, and I pray to everybody, listening to me, we'll read Romans 12, 10. It says, Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. When you read this, this just blows, blows this homosexual love thing, this same-sex marriage thing, blows it out of the water. I mean, you've got, you've got men marrying men and women marrying women, and they claim, well, that's what Scripture says, brotherly love. You know, let brotherly love continue. But ladies and gentlemen, we're, talk, we're talking about agape love. We're not talking about this abominational love, this erotic love, uh, this uh, deception, this lying thing, this delusion that Satan has gripped this nation and the world with, that men, men have defied God to the point where men, some men would rather sleep with men, ladies and gentlemen, would rather sleep with a man than to to uh, uh, have a woman as a wife. The Bible says uh, a man shall leave his father and mother and take unto him a wife. And that's what marriage is all about. But in America, ladies and gentlemen, you've got a growing number of people. You've got a major political candidate. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a major political candidate running for office and he is married to another man. And that other man is his husband. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a major political candidate who is sleeping with a man and, 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 and having sex with a man, and he wants to be the president of the United States, and there's a growing number of people who support him. Ladies and gentlemen, God is not pleased. God is not pleased. Well, well, you're just bullying, Pastor Carter. You just, you just bullying. No, I'm not bullying. I'm preaching. I'd rather be a preacher than a bully. I preach the gospel. The Bible says, "Be kindly affection to one another." It's hard right to be a friend of another man with brotherly love. Okay, with brotherly love. That's philos. We get the word Philadelphia from brotherly love or philos, phileo. Uh, but this, that, this sexual aberration, this sexual abomination, ladies and gentlemen, beware, be cautious, get out of it. If you're involved in it, get out of it. I've got friends, I've got, hey, look, I've got people uh, very close to me, very close to me, who hate my guts. Uh, I'm talking about uh, 
No, I'm talking about what I'm talking about. They don't even want anything to do with me because they know I stand on the word of God and I take a stand against this homosexual thing. I preach holiness and righteousness. I preach Christ Jesus. David, we just finished in, in uh, our Bible study this past week how David loved Jonathan and Jonathan loved David, but it was brotherly love. Ladies and gentlemen, they were uh, 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 uh good buddies, cut buddies. I mean, they were homies, but there was no sexual thing between them. And ladies and gentlemen, we have got to repent in this nation and, 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 and turn from these wicked ways and let brotherly love continue. Romans thirteen eight, and my subject is let's start a love revolution. We can start a love revolution, ladies and gentlemen, by reading the scriptures, uh, internalizing the scriptures, and living what the word of God says. And if you're caught up in any of this mess, uh, anything that's not uh, God-like, repent and get out of it. Just repent and get out of it. Don't get mad at the preacher because if you throw bricks at me, uh, uh, another preacher's going to come and preach it even more. And so God is not pleased. God's going to send his word until people repent. But the danger is, the danger is, ladies and gentlemen, if God says enough is enough, that's it. I've had it with you. I'm through. If God uh, does like he did with, 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 with Belshazzar and writes a handwriting on the wall, if you see handwriting on the wall of your house like Belshazzar saw in the book of Daniel, and, and the handwriting says, uh, 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 it was interpreted, you're finished. It's over. You're through. If God says that, then you're through. Ain't nothing you can do. And so repent now. While you're hearing this word, repent uh, uh, in, uh, whether you're in Kenya, whether you're in China, whether you're in Af Afghanistan, whether you're in Australia, whether you're in, a, in the United States, wherever you are, wherever you hear this word, if you're involved in an ungodly relationship, you need to repent. In other words, confess it to God. Don't just confess it to God, but get out of it. Turn from it. Repent means to turn from it. Walk away from it. Don't go back into it and live holy unto God. Well, I don't want uh, my partner to dislike me. I, hey, I'd rather have my partner disliking me if my partner and I are not right because I have decided to make Jesus my choice. Jesus was my choice. Jackie knows that Jesus Christ is first in my life, and whatever I do is going to be to the glory and honor of God and anything in our relationship that's not Christ-like, we, we get out of it. We get rid of that situation, and uh, that's the way it is. And when a man chooses a woman to be his wife, and, and that means you put everything else back, let everything go, and, and the two of you work together to the glory and honor of God, not to please the, the, the uh, sexual mores of your society, not to please the cultural mores of your society, but what does the Bible say? God does not condone, ladies and gentlemen, a man marrying a man. God does not condone a woman marrying a woman. Uh, a, certain, a certain mayor of a certain Midwestern city in the United States might be getting a lot of votes and a large following uh, in this nation, and, and, and this nation knows he is married to a man, but God's going to judge the nation, and God will judge this person if this person doesn't repent. And so, so and, and even, listen, listen to this. Listen, to, and I know some of you are going to get angry with this, but I just don't care. If you are a Christian and you're supporting an ungodly movement, if you are a Christian and you're supporting uh, 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 ungodly words that come out of a politician's mouth, or you support a movement that a, a political leader has initiated, and you're a Christian, you're just as guilty as the person who's doing the wrong. So we need to open our eyes. We need to get back into the Word of God. We need to do the Word of God. Stop trying to be popular. Stop trying to be loved. Jesus said, if any person will come after me, they must suffer 
persecution. Get ready to suffer. You're going to have to suffer. If anyone will follow after Jesus Christ, that person is going to have to suffer in this life. So you may as well get used to it. Dig in. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. You can face anything with the Holy Ghost. The Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. God will take care of you, but he wants us to do godly. The Bible says uh, it has been told you, O oh man, what I require of you, but to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly before God. We are to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly before God. If you support a president or a presidential candidate who hates people, wants to build a wall to oppress people, uh, hates people because of their color or their uh, the, the side of the tracks they were born on, uh, you, you, you support someone who, who hates people because of their uh, sexual orientation, uh, then You've got to repent. Well, Pastor God, you just talked about a, a politician who, who, who has a sexual orientation that's different from yours. Yes, and I, I preached the word on that too, and I gave you God's position on that, and I make my stand on that, but I did not beat that man down. That man has a chance to repent, and so do those who are following him. And so let's be real. Let's be consistent. Let's get on the Word of God. Let's live the Word of God. And, and, and let's make sure that, that we're living right before God. The Bible says, holiness without which no man shall see God. God wants a holy nation. He wants a righteous nation. Whether you live in Kenya or whether you live in Canada, whether you live in Great Britain or, wherever, where, or whether you live in the United States of America, God wants a holy nation. Well, just a few more uh, scriptures on our subject, let's start a love revolution. 1 John 3, 11 says, For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. No matter who the other person is, we are responsible to love them. We may not like what they're doing, but we've got to love them. And loving them means you you got to tell them, hey, you're wrong. The scripture says this. I love you, brother, but you're wrong. And and, and, and loving one another says, hey, uh, uh, brother, I'm not going to follow you in this because what you're doing is wrong. I love you, but you're wrong. Love is bold, ladies and gentlemen. Love is kind. Love is patient. Love is also bold. Love looks evil in the eye and says, no, I will not compromise with you and the church needs to learn how to love with the love of Christ Christ was bold in his love I mean God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life Jesus was bold in his love God loves the world so much Jesus in his love for the world went into the temple and saw those corrupt money changers People making money, making a profit in the temple of God, selling uh, diseased animals, shortchanging people, and, and cr corrupting people, uh, priests having sex in the temple, having orgies with priests with other men or with uh, women with prostitutes, and Jesus flipped the tables. He made a whip, and he whipped people and chased them out of the temple. That's love. Yes, love is not always uh, 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 sweet and kind. Love means you take a stand for holiness and righteousness. And, and uh, I would rather the Lord chasten me now than to stand before him at the judgment and hear him say, depart from me. I never knew you. Ladies and gentlemen, the cruelest words you will ever hear, but they will be holy words coming from the mouth of the Holy Son of God. He, he will say to a lot of people, and a lot of church people, a lot of American Christians, a lot of so-called Christians, Jesus is going to say, depart from me, you Republican Christian. Depart from me, you Democratic Christian. I never knew you. Oh, you were big in the Democratic Party. You had a lot of following. You had a lot of likes on Facebook. You gave out a lot of tweets. And you had a lot of financial support. 
you are very, very popular, but depart from me. I never knew you. And ladies and gentlemen, and, 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 and if we're supporting anybody who's like that, and, and, we, and we can go to church every Sunday, and, and, and some of you are pastors, some of you are teachers, some of you are church leaders, teachers, Sunday school teachers, apostles, prophets. You've got a calling on your life, but you're corrupt because you refuse to yield to the Holy Spirit and do the word of God. I'm warning you now. Jesus is going to say, and he'll say to me too, if I'm doing wrong, depart from me. I never knew you. I never knew you. The worst words that anybody will ever be able to hear in, in eternal existence. Depart from me. I never knew you. And then to be cast into a lake of fire, to burn forever and ever, because you practice a form of religion that put politics before Jesus that put the American flag before Jesus or the Kenyan flag before Jesus or the uh, uh, Canadian oak leaf before, maple leaf before Jesus. If you practice a form of religion that, that put uh, 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 being married to a man before Jesus or being married to another woman before Jesus, if, if you've practiced that and you heard the word of God and you got angry at the, the preacher, or the teacher, the one who brought it to you, and you shut them out, as I've had people close to me shut me out because I'm a preacher of the word of God, the day is coming where you will have to face God face to face. No, no, the, the Iowa caucus the Iowa caucus will not be able to stand with you. No, the New Hampshire caucus will not be able to stand with you. No, the Indiana caucus will not be able to stand with you. No, the Kenyan caucus will not be able to stand with you. No, the Australian caucus will not be able to stand with you. No, the mayor, the mayor of your town will not be able to stand with you and support you and cover up your atrocities. No, the police department will not be able to stand with you. No, the Ku Klux Klan, the Grand, Dra Grand Dragon, and the wiz Grand Wizard, uh, the Grand Poo Poo, whoever he is, he will not be able to stand with you when you stand before the righteous God. No, the American Civil Liberties Union will not be able to stand with you when you've got to give an account for being a man and married to a man. No, Nobody will be able to stand. You have to face God alone. You know, your money cannot. God, you can't buy God off. God is not going to compromise because of money. No, 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 no. You've got to face God alone and give an account. Did you follow Jesus? Did you receive Jesus? Were you born again? What did you do with Jesus? Did you do what this word says do? Or did you practice your own form of Christianity? Ladies and gentlemen, as Stephen Matson said, there is a reckoning coming. A reckoning is coming. And uh, in the name of Back, Back to Basics Ministries, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you'll be ready and I'll be ready to give an account at the judgment. Finally, in our let's start a love revolution message, let me turn to 1 John chapter 4, where I asked you to turn about 35 minutes ago. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. Ladies and gentlemen, we're listening to a lot of voices. You, even on TBN, the uh, Trinity Broadcasting Network, you don't know whether that voice speaking is of God. Men have deluded others, have uh, deceived others, and we've got some corrupt folks on there ministering what they call the gospel. And, and, and you don't know in your local church often whether that man or woman is of God. 
the Bible says you need to test the spirit by the spirit. Husband, you need to test the spirit of your wife. After you test your own spirit by the spirit, make sure you're right, husband. Wife, test your husband's spirit. And then if, uh, if one is off base, then repent and get on one accord. God wants us to obey him in all things. It's dangerous to do your own thing and to dishonor God and dishonor the word of God. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, where if you have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. It's sad how so many big name preachers, big name preachers, I could call their names several years ago. Barack Obama is the Antichrist. And Barack Obama had to suffer eight years of presidency without the support of a majority of white Americans, the majority of white politicians, because they labeled him even before his, he was elected. He's the Antichrist. That's how nasty Satan is, and that's how he can deceive even the church and many of you got caught up in that Barack Obama is the Antichrist madness until the Lord opened your, eye, opened your eyes. No, Barack Obama is not the Antichrist. Neither is, neither is uh, uh, Donald Trump. But the Antichrist is coming. God does not want you deceived. God wants you to open your heart to the word of God. Open your eyes Stop supporting these politicians who are corrupt, who are ungodly, who know how to speak the word of God in their rallies and know how to say, make America great again and God bless America. And then after saying, God bless America, put the Mexicans down and call them nasty names and put it out in the world on the, in, twi in Twitter. And at the same time, uh, uh, make deals behind uh, closed walls uh, with 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 other nations to 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 subjugate the American people. Wake up, wake up, church. Wake up, pastor. Preach the word of God. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. The Bible says, "Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them." Because greater is he that is in you that is in the world. The Lord is saying to every believer, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Greater is he in you than he that is in the world. Then we close out with these verses. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation or the substitute for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, so ought we also to love one another. Praise God. Let's start a love revolution. Well, Pastor, how can I start a love revolution? It must begin in me first and in you first. You're not going to change the Republican Party. You're not going to change the Democratic Party you're not going to change the Democratic Republic of, the, of Congo. 
You're not going to change the Czechoslovakian government. You're not going to change the, Repub the nation of Canada. You're not going to change the uh, uh, Commonwealth of, of Great Britain. But you can change you. Change begins with you. The love revolution begins with you. It begins with you taking a look at yourself and saying, I need Jesus Christ in my life. And I'm going to commit my life to Jesus. It means renouncing those things that may be popular. It means getting out of that same-sex marriage and saying to your partner, hey, I'm sorry, but I sinned against God. We've sinned against God, and I'm getting out of this. I'm going to get delivered, and I'm going to live like a man should, or I'm going to live like a woman should, but I'm getting out of this. I have defied God. I have defied the Almighty God. Repent of it. Or if you've made political decisions and you, you, you refuse to preach certain things because you did not want to uh, uh, lose popularity with your political party, you need to repent, preacher, and ask God to forgive you. Then you get up in that pulpit and you preach the word of God, rightly divide the word of truth, and be bold. Yes, do that. Let's start a revolution. It begins with me loving the Lord, confessing my sins, asking God to forgive me. It, it begins with me uh, uh, forgiving everyone and anyone who's ever hurt me or harmed me, whether that person is dead or alive. It begins with me not hating someone because of the color of their skin. It begins with me forgiving uh, what my granddaddy did and forgiving what my great-great-granddaddy did. And it begins with me forgiving anyone, no matter who they are, who's ever hurt me or hurt my mama, hurt my daddy, hurt my wife, hurt my children. Forgive them and walk in love. It begins with confessing Jesus Christ to be my Savior and my Lord. It begins with me getting filled with the Holy Ghost and, and telling God, I cannot make it without the indwelling and the filling of the Holy Spirit, and I need you to guide me, Lord. It begins with me committing my ways unto the Lord and trusting the Lord with all my heart and leaning not unto my own understanding. It begins with me making up my mind Politicians are not going to govern my life. No, no, no. The American flag is not going to govern my life. Uh, 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 constitutional rhetoric is not going to govern my life. Political rhetoric is not going to influence or, or govern my life. I'm going to live for Jesus. I'm going to be a follower of Jesus. I'm going to be a real Christian. I'm going to do what the Word of God says, and I'm going to ask God to help me every moment of my life for the rest of my life and then I'm going to love people the way God loves them. Father God, help us to do these things and more. And we cannot do these things unless we have Jesus in our lives. So I pray, Lord God, that if anyone is listening uh, today who is not saved, that they will repent of their sins and receive Jesus Christ as Lord of their lives, and get under the teaching authority of a God-sent teacher, pastor, preacher, and to study the Word of God. If they can't find a pastor, that they will study the Word of God and do what is written in your Word. And then, God, for those who have backslidden and gotten off track, and many are listening who have gotten off track, Help them to get back on track by repenting and saying, I'm returning to you, Lord. I'm going to be a part of this love revolution. Begin in me, Lord. I thank you, Father, and I bless you, and I honor you, and I praise you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross for all of us. For God, you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Praise God. We thank you, God. We're going to stop by recording. If you have any questions, please get in touch with me. I'll be glad to talk with you, have prayer with you, 
and uh, and 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 uh, be a blessing to you.